What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I am your host here, Luke Larson, and joining me today, as per the huge, my lovely and loquacious special guest will be assisting me in leisurely launching you into levity old legs. Yeah! For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. That's How are you doing, dude? I'm... I'm here, you know. How is your how is your time on Europa? Paradise. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible, dude. That you, you haven't you haven't enjoyed it? I haven't. No. Because there it's not it's just not because, s- sustainable. Well, it's because heaven doesn't need you. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah, right. What a great line. Yeah, you know, a little wow. a little a little elephant told me that we were gonna be talking about television again today. We're back, baby. We're back. Undisputed. We're back to dive deep. Deep. Damn, deep, 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 deep. <laughs> deep, 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 deep. Into the world of Watchmen. Watchmen HBO we're back. Series. We're on the we're on the dawn here. We're on the precipice of the finale. This coming week, it's it's going to be all over, and we wanted to take this time to, for one, have a record that old legs has dragged me kicking and screaming through many weeks of keep. I don't right. think you guys realize how big of a feat it is that old legs kept me no. honest and kept me watching right. new TV. You're right. Right. I just wanted... And we also wanted to uh, just announce uh, it's, um, eh, you know, maybe a bit of a spoiler, but uh, I think, you know, now is the better time than ever. But I just wanted to come out and be like, hey, you know, it's me. Mm. I am. I'm Lube Man. Right. That was you. I, I'm, I that's me. I I I I douse myself in lube and I and I go shooting through into the sewer. Uh wow. that is me. That I was, you know, that's that's who, who I was. am. Yeah. <laughs> that was your yeah, cameo. That's that's my power. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's cool. You go hang out with Pennywise down there. Yeah. In the grace. I've been working uh I've been I working on my character for a lo- really long time and I just wanted to just, you know, yeah. I, the, you know, I, I, hey, yeah, I've got the the reception's been really good. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's um, saying congratulations. Thank you. You did yeah. it. No, I seriously, like, <laughs> seriously, you don't have to, like, you don't even have to, like, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you so much. That thank meant you. that meant no, so much to me. That it does, <laughs> it yeah. No, it really, it really does. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it really does. Yeah. It's really something else. You know, I love that the listeners can hear in real time me trying to remember. What you were talking about? We're trying to remember who <laughs> trying Luke Man to Luke Man. Trying As to think, if you is, could forget. Is this a joke that I'm missing? You know, it's it. What what am I doing? But but we got right. there. Yeah, what that was the original Minute Man. Who could forget? Luke Man. Yeah, really. Who could? The timeless one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we got a lot to unpack here. So I we think do. the last time yeah. we left was we just had a little taste. We had the first episode. Right. We left it with Kitchen Coke, and and then you know started with Kitchen Coke, ended with with him strung up in a tree, the dude in a wheelchair, and then a lot of things have happened since then. Right. Which Old Legs tells me tends to do with television. Usually, oh, yeah, lots right. of events. And I think it's I, it's all leading up to uh, you know we've we've had a couple of I wouldn't I wouldn't say like quite like bottleneck episodes but uh you know I, th- I think it's all leading up to uh um the big uh lube man uh solo episode <laughs> to, to finish off the season yeah. and perhaps the series you know yeah. right that'd um, be a fitting it's end kind of all the question we've been we've been asking okay i've been mm-hmm. on the internet i've been you know on the search the message 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 boards uh uh lots of conversation like who yeah. Who can, who is he? Who You've been reading like, lots of Reddit articles. Yes. About yes. Published Everyone with wants to know. Everyone wants and to know. And there's only one episode to find out and, and this is it. Yeah. You're right. That is a good right? question because I mean, as you could tell, I completely 
space that completely forgot all about it. When yeah, is that going to come no, back? You did. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. That was always in there. Yeah. 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 This... So yeah, we've uh, it's been a couple episodes here. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, if you're not caught up, you know, go out watch the show. But we're uh, one episode left. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think for the most part, we could probably, unless there's like something. So uh, I suggest we maybe jump back into it here after last week's episode. Um, was there anything before we get into a God walks into a bar that you kind of wanted to to go over or something meaning um, pressing? Well, I mean, I think way? you I think you touched on the forgotten most meaningful part of the whole show, Lube Man. Mm. Um, right. Well, now that we covered that, um, I would think I think that um, you know the 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 A bar storyline. We'll get into that with this episode, but but the one that really stood out to me was I'm looking through the episodes here called "Little Fear of Lightning," episode five. Okay, and that was the one with looking glass and his kind of backstory um that one really like that cemented the show for me at that like before that i was i was enjoying it i was enjoying the ride i thought it was great i thought there were lots of lots of nice twisty turnies um i think that's an, that's the television term i believe uh i'm, I'm new to this whole thing um but but i i I liked it. I liked where it was going, but that episode five was the one where it made me sit back and like, holy shit! Like, I love this show, and I, I, it's completely unexpected, and I have no idea where it's going, and they're just taking so many risks, and oh, yeah. I think a lot of them are paying off for the most big part. Swings. Big swings, very big, big swings. swings, and I just loved like the whole. <laughs> The whole framework of that episode is kind of dealing with his PTSD from when the squid dropped when he was in New Jersey, um, uh, and just like have his whole like life and mindset and everything is kind of framed around that incident, and then to have it just be kind of stripped away at the end when you know when he when he finds out that it wasn't like psychic uh, mind control it was you know when he found out the truth. And how he was just, he just was clinging on to that, um, I forget what it's called, the shiny, uh, whatever. The stuff that his, his mask is made out of, he has, he secretly keeps it under his cap and he leads like these counseling sessions about people who have PTSD about it or afraid of it. And just to have it all just like, his whole reality just really be like, ugh, just like thrown at him. And it's like, well, what, <laughs> like, he's just like, this is everything. Like this made me who I am. Like everything I I know is like built around this, and just had to have it. Just so, I that one that one really got to me. I really the, I, I really like the that the, one. Uh, the fear your fear of uh, fear uh of, interdimensional that's right uh, anxiety. Mm-hmm. We are Absolutely. not the only dimension. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know. We must continue to live. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that one, that one, I love. I'm, I'm interested to kind of see where that, where that comes around to. You know, we we're gonna touch on the on the A bar story, but hers. I don't know. We can just kind of do like a quick overview of kind of where the story threads are at this point. Um, Angela A bar. She was doing cop stuff and. You know, whatever. Who gives a shit? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, she was, she, uh, her grandfather found out that the old dude in the wheelchair that we talked about in the first episode, he was, you know, turned out to be her grandfather. And then there was a whole detective kind of story in that where she finds out that he was who he really was. Um, he was the hangman. Right? There's what was his thing? Uh, hooded Justice. That's right. Hooded Justice. <laughs> Something. That was a great episode too. That was a really good episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna use that to so that the we forget man. about me saying hangman for a second. <laughs> He's got a noose uh, around his neck, man. That's how <laughs> that's how yeah. good I am at naming, you know, super. I mean in in 
in your defense, I mean, he was a, an original Minutemen slash yeah, Watchmen, but exactly. But Thank you. He, he's not exactly <laughs> fleshed out in the comic series. Yeah, so, he's just kind uh, of in the background. Well, um, I'll, I will take that out. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's it, it's it's really good. I, I thought I I'll agree. I, I really enjoyed the Looking Glass episode. Uh, doing, I really appreciate. It's so it's so rare, and even in television, where you get these like kind of like standout episodes of anything, where it's just mm-hmm. like, all right, we're you know, fuck everyone else. Like we're just gonna do we're doing a looking glass episode and this is like very this is a this is a very like lindelof thing to do mm. uh he did he did this for every character in lost uh he did it a bunch in the leftovers and and yeah it's it's never not bad uh which i always kind of appreciated mm. uh um the the Lori blake episode was really good too um yeah very very good got a, a giant blue dildo uh yep I mean, but who doesn't, right? Right, exactly. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, and then, what, like you said, the Hangman episode was, was really, uh, uh, I thought that was, leading up to, to last week's episode, I thought, I was like, wow, that's that's probably that the might best be episode the so part. far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because it, it, it blends probably the best, uh, the, the old with the new. Mm-hmm. And kind of taking something that you already thought you somewhat knew or had like a a, a handle on, and just kind of completely flipping it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even within the Looking Glass episode, there's like the 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 scene where he's just sitting in his apartment and he's just like watching the the hooded justice like porn, and you're like, yeah, like what it? What yeah, is you're like, this? wait a minute, it's kind of like <laughs> weird. Is, is this just on? like some like weird fetish? Like, yeah, thing? exactly. Yeah, but it's actually in the whole context of the universe it's, it's yeah. sort of canon uh that that hooded justice and and uh uh mr metropolis were a thing yeah. it's just that nobody knew that uh hooded justice was black and so right. uh yeah there, there's all these sorts of kind of nods and and just kind of pulling the, the rug out from under you and uh, it's, and it was just weird it's, how it's like, like you said, like, I don't know, weird. It's just like, yeah, like when you first see, you're like, oh, it's kind of, a, oh, yeah, is it like a weird, like, fetish thing? And then you're like, oh, I guess it was just, like, commonly known. Like, you see episodes of that shitty TV show that they're retelling it, and you're like, oh, I guess, yeah, it was just a thing. But then even, like, even in the, the Hooded Justice origin nostalgia episode, like, in his own story, like, it was also just like just a thing. Like, yep, that was just a thing <laughs> that happened. They didn't right. really spend time on it. It was like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, just a thing. I was like, that's. I mean, I think that's a pretty interesting take because it was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, it, they did. It's didn't... always go ahead. So here's where here's where this thing, and I'm probably gonna reference this a couple times, but just like the the storytelling mastery that I think. Uh, Lindelof in particular has developed over his career where he can have just like a, a simple nod to, to something that's coming later mm-hmm. and you're not going to find out in the next five minutes uh, what that's all about and I think that's so rare where especially in our world of like recaps and looking stuff up on the internet and reading reviews uh to have anything in a singular episode where you don't like immediately explain it Mm -hmm. or uh not just have it be like a singular cliffhanger at the end is is kind of incredible uh you just don't see it a lot uh and and uh, and i think those types of just small uh storytelling bits are just littered throughout every single episode and you never know uh, are we are we gonna ever find out why uh, Angela was hooked to an elephant uh, right. up in the giant space tower? Yeah, what like, the f- who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I don't we know. might not. There, there's a ton of stuff in uh, Damon Lindelof show that he just he just throws in there just to pretty much fuck with people because he knows that every single person on the internet is writing about this. And I think he kind of enjoys the whole like theory mongering stuff. So it's it's a lot of this stuff is in there just to 
throw people off and then but some of it's not and that's kind of what makes it really good yeah and i kind of want to go back and watch like the first couple episodes again because like now in the last few you start to recognize those kind of those little yeah i don't know i don't really want to say easter eggs but just those little little hints for people who are paying attention, you know, that you can pick up on that are just like weirdly placed there that you like. And then once you start to get the rhythm of it, then you start to pick them up more and more. And you're like, Oh, that's what that meant. Oh, that's what that meant. You know? And like, I kind of want to go back and watch the first couple looking at it like that. Cause I'm sure there's a bunch of shit that like, you know, that I missed. And like, when you mentioned the elephant, you know, um, that was weird obviously and i <laughs> i loved it but then like later i think it, yeah you ever, it was you ever just like there's uh, there's a couple of i've had a couple of these moments but because i think i've watched pretty much every episode at, at at least twice and you just like sometimes you just be looking at it and you're like oh my god <laughs> they did it it's the elephant in the room <laughs> wow maybe and it's just so obvious yeah it's so just like God, like, yeah. Uh, and sometimes I pick up on it, and then other times it's just I don't know who it's there for, but it's just right. like, what if there, what if there's like, just like an elephant in the room, man? Like, we don't even have to say it. Just yeah. like, let's just have the elephant in the room and <laughs> just leave it at that. And it's just yeah. like, uh, but yeah, continue then, on, keep going. Okay, yeah. well, that, that point one just kind of came right. To well, I'm glad you said it because that like. That I wasn't gonna get to anywhere near a conclusive point like you did, honestly. So it's probably good that you did that um, before I kept rambling. But all I was gonna say is that later in that episode, um, when Osmandius is talking to Doctor Manhattan, um, he said, Doctor Manhattan, didn't he say? He said, I don't forget what they're talking about, but he just said, "How'd you know that?" And then he said, "A little elephant told me," and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> like was that that elephant cuz like that's not a thing you say i mean you say a little birdie told me but i'm like i don't think like i mean maybe that elephant maybe it was a different elephant maybe maybe it's just like maybe you thought it would just be funny to say instead of a little birdie just said a little elephant but i don't think that like if he says elephant and then there also happens to be a big elephant in the room i think that that would be connected somehow i don't know how um i don't know Adrian if Adrian that... V uh um <laughs> is Dr. Doolittle Smart guy. Yeah. Smart guy. <laughs> Smart guy. Known uh known planner. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. So I don't know. I think it's connected. <laughs> yeah, and then the Asian lady's obsessed with him, so something's gonna happen. That's what I predict for the finale. Something will something's... happen. <sighs> good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> I'm I can tell uh can tell you're into it. Uh <laughs> You know what? I this was is... this is something I wanted to say. So we got the blue dildo, right? And mm. for Doctor Manhattan, we just got a big black dick. We didn't get the big blue dick yet. You're, There's still one episode. I'm a little bit disappointed. That's like his whole thing. And like, mm. don't get me wrong. I mean, that black dick was huge. I mean, it was a big dick. But just, I guess there's one more episode. There's time. We could still see the blue dick. But that's like okay. that's always his thing. That's like his moniker. He's gonna go so around. This is, this is like you. This is like when I was mad that there wasn't more bear fellatio in exactly. the new. Uh, That's exactly. In, right. in the new Doctor Sleep movie, like you're, you're like, come on, guys, be, yeah. you know. Look, what are we doing? We, you know, what are we doing? We're doing a Watchmen series. We're doing a Watchmen. <laughs> There's gonna be blue dick in For there. For Christ's sakes! I should. I don't know. It, it why, might be gone. Why am I the only one saying this, guys? It might be gone. <sighs> That might be it. We got one more episode, guys. Make it right, please. Well, we'll Show see. us some blue dick. Uh, okay, so yeah, you know what? Let's. I think we're pretty much there. Uh, so the last episode, uh, a god walks into a bar. Uh, the penultimate. Um, I thought it was one of the better television episodes I've seen in quite a while. Uh, Probably, probably this year at least. You know, I was gonna say I agree, but I was like, that doesn't mean anything, Luke. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, you're like <laughs> it's one of like the eight best episodes of uh, television I've ever yeah. seen. It's like <laughs> Not including is... the previous previous seven episodes, uh, <laughs> right? Um, which are up there. You know, yeah. this was on par with you know the the penultimate finale of the first season of Yu Gi Oh. Uh, best friends, yes. best duelists, part two, where Joey and Yugi have to duel each other. You know that one. You know, and then God walks into a bar. Eh. Jury's Good out. Good stuff. Good. Uh. Good pull there. Thank you. Good pull with the Joey. Thank you. Yeah. Um. We'll uh. We'll get to. We'll get to the many follies of Joey and just. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, hope, yep. hope this works. Yeah, it's all based on luck. <laughs> it's never based on skill. Fucking, Fucking yeah, Joey. No, it's a little. It's actually the same thing. They're both playing the same game. Yeah. It's just Yu-Gi-Oh has fucking confidence, and yeah, he like true. looks at you with that thousand mile stare, yeah. and he's like, "I believe in the fucking hard luck cards," and yeah. I'm gonna pull that blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> and Joey's like, "Well." Yeah. Yeah. Time in my last card, but better be a good one, right? Time wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I play my pot of green. <laughs> this allows me to draw two additional cards from two the top of my deck cards. and to add them you to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Joey's got a handful of pot of greens. Oh yeah, uh, and that's fun. it. That's all he's so, got. That's all he's got. Yep. Um. So, yes, uh, so join us next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. You, just need to, you, you kind of just need to put uh, uh, a, a steak knife into that bit because it'll just kind of keep <laughs> Oh, it's going. juicy. It's juicy, all right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, so, so we're here at the penultimate episode. A god walks into a bar. We get the... Uh, we get the Dr. Manhattan reveal. He's kind of been on the periphery this entire time. Uh, what, what did you, first off, what did you think? What were your expectations? Like, did you think we were going to get Dr. Manhattan? Did you want um, him? Uh, did you, you know, obviously you were, you were hoping for some, some, uh, for one, some for full, full frontal nudity. Yeah, but, one, uh, I wanted one specific part of Dr. Manhattan for sure. Right. Even if it was just a frame photograph, you know? Somebody just had that right. up on their wall. I would have been cool with that. And I thought, you know, Blue Dildo was close, but it just wasn't, you know. It just, it's yeah, you were like, if, if I put my clothes on, it's all over. Right. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I did not expect to see him. I didn't think we would. I kind of thought that, I thought it was sort of beautifully done with those phone booths up to Mars and how... Um, Silk Spectre kind of almost had a compulsion to to go there and to just tell jokes and pretend like she was talking to him. She's like, I know you never get this, whatever. And I kind of like that he was ghosting her, and you didn't even really know. You're like, maybe he is on Mars, maybe he's not, you know, maybe he's over here. It seems like it would be like Dr. Manhattan to, to just fuck off and disappear, just like fade into the universe. So that's kind of what I was expecting where it was sort of like, it seemed like they would be kind of like Rorschach says in the movie, you know, they, they look up to the, to the heavens and, and shout, save us. And I whisper back, no, like that's kind of what I thought Dr. Manhattan would be where he would just be off and people would be like, we need you to come back. And he just never would. And kind of become just sort of a, a mythical status, like, whatever. But, I gotta say, I was happy, happy to see him. And I I really, I really loved how, how they portrayed him. And just, like, they did a masterful job, and we'll get into this, I guess, right now. But of the, the paradoxical, how he just keeps saying how time, mm -hmm. he experiences time differently, and how he... It's um, how all time is non-linear to him. It's all happening at the same time, right? And uh, I think they did they did just such a beautiful way of portraying that and bouncing back and forth. And I liked how it made him more relatable, I guess. I think and less like because he he's a tough character to relate to for a lot of obvious reasons. 
but it's just he's so heady and aloof and distant and just like on a different wavelength and then this it was interesting to to just kind of see how he just i mean honestly just the simple fact of just him dealing with shit that he wanted to deal with right. and and not just like uh I'm all powerful fuck off everybody you know which is kind of what you expect or what I expected I guess and so I really liked him you know you kind of got to sit with him and and experience what it would be like to to be like that and it would be it, at both times great and beautiful and also tragic and terrible like knowing everything that's going to happen because it's all happening at once and knowing that sort of life is meaningless and also meaningful for the same reason, you know, in that same way. Um, and yeah, I, I honestly, I dug it. I did not, I was happy to see him and I thought, Oh good. We'll see him for a little bit. And then like, he'll go away before he ruins it, but they doubled down on it and they made it, better than I ever could have imagined, honestly. But what right. did you what did you think? Did you think that we'd that we'd see him? I I didn't know. I thought he would just be kind of this this overarching he would he would be more of a theme of the show. Uh hmm. just because there's there's these just heavy uh pieces of society that lean so much onto him and, and I thought I thought pretty much all we were gonna get was just the uh, you know, here's here's basically the mark that he left, and mm-hmm. this is what the world thinks of him. And you have all these different opinions, and it was just kind of, and that might have actually been good enough, uh, just with everything else that's kind of going on in this series. But mm-hmm. uh, I thought it was it was so interesting because so here. It, here we are in 2019, mm-hmm. and uh, it, your podcast hosts are um, perceiving time in in many different uh, many different times. It, it's not not in the same way that our listeners are. I, right, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, this is true. Um, it, when 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 I laugh at a joke, it's it's really just because you know that's <laughs> Luke's uh, Luke's telling me we can do. Uh, <laughs> we can do a, a con air uh a no. three hour <laughs> only never, episode in the future and, and yes no i'm i'm gonna make it happen <laughs> we will do con air at some point uh but no it's uh this whole thing we're we're, we're in this our our world is is so heavily saturated with superhero films and TV shows and 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 anything under the sun that you can think of and here we are uh, we have a we have a, a a comic book show and there's one superhero in it and it's it's probably the smallest episode in scope uh, we're so used to seeing like. God, there's always the there's a fucking MacGuffin, and then we're like chasing something till the end, and then mm-hmm. the bad guys come and they almost destroy the universe, and then this episode where you have this all powerful being who has like the Superman issues, where he's just not interesting because he's so mm-hmm. overpowered, yeah, and it's literally just like an episode about love, and it's this like tiny, small, intimate thing where it's just these two different people who are together and you get to see this relationship blossom between them. And it asks all these sort of interesting questions about like, well, I mean, aren't all relationships doomed uh, yeah. from the beginning? And isn't that yeah. just like the, the nature of everything? And it's just like, ah, oh, fuck, like, and it just nails it on so many different levels. And it gives you, I don't know. I, after I watched this, I had this like weird, like kind of existential feeling Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a little bit of dread, and I was like, "Oh God damn! Like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> 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 fucking like podcast and like, <laughs> fuck, oh, like man. It's just, yeah, I was right there, and right yeah, and, it, and it's this whole thing where it's right, and mm-hmm. it 
and it's not loud and bombastic or anything. It's just this, no. it's this very human story with like the most unhuman part of the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's so many different ways they could go where they just blow it out and they make it very fantastical and crazy. And, and, but, uh, they choose to keep it where it's just, it's the, once again, it's this guy who, you know, he's this omniscient being, but he falls in love. Yeah. Right. And that's what it's about. Yeah. That's what the episode's about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw <laughs> Yeah. It's. It did definitely. I mean, if you if you're looking, you know, if you've had a dry spell of existential crises, I would, you know, I would recommend picking this up and you know having a little gander at it. Um, it did. It got in. It got in deep, but it's also, yeah. There's just a lot of. I mean, throughout the show, I guess, but I think it really encapsulated this too of just like, yeah, purpose. And, you know, what, I just can't help but, but just keep thinking over and over, like, what is the point? Especially when you, when you know everything that's going to happen. And even, like, when he says it doesn't matter, like, when he starts making waffles because he's hungry. It's like, what are you doing? They're out there. They're going to come, you know, we got to stop them. And he's like, well, it's inevitable. They're going to, they're going to win. They're going to get me, you know. She's like, no, we can go fight it or whatever. And then she goes out and has this gunfight, and then he comes out and saves her and kills most of them. And you think, yeah, there you go, you big blue dummy. Like, see, you just, like like Adrian said, you just lack imagination, man. You can circumvent it. You can be like the Adjustment Bureau. You know, you can knock the hat off and they can't follow you through the door, you know. And, uh, and then, no, he was right. It didn't matter. And she was like, see, you, I, whatever, you were wrong. No, I wasn't. Boom, he's gone. And it's just like, it really makes you think, because it's like, well, but he knew that it was going to happen, but he still kind of let it happen, so could he, but I don't, I don't know, do you think there was a way that he could have? When I watched it again, because I was kind of wondering about that, Yeah. Uh, he, the last guy that's on like the little gun kind of like ducks yeah. behind it. And the only reason he doesn't explode his head is because he's stopping the bullets with oh. his other hand. And again, it's like this whole thing where he's like this omniscient person where he could just like what's, you know, he could just, he could you know, just explode the guy that's behind the truck like the truck shouldn't, you know, be a thing. Yeah. But um, just the representation of like he chooses her sure. over himself, yeah. right? Yeah is kind of just like the and he turns around and it's like well that's that's it yeah. uh I, I thought it was a really fitting up or fitting end uh i thought it was like weirdly powerful the second time when he says like this is the moment mm-hmm. and i was like ah oh, like why am i <laughs> <laughs> why am i feeling this it's like this like I'm like I was like watching it like it was like fucking Manchester by the sea. I'm like Jesus Christ, like what is happening to me? Like yeah, I was like, I was like I'm just like I'm sitting here watching this fucking blue idiot. I'm yeah. screaming. I'm Ugh. like I'm like uh yeah. like man. Is this what people felt when Thanos killed Spider Man? Like <laughs> yeah, I am inevitable. <laughs> I think yeah. it's that it's something he says. Yeah, that's right on. You got it. I think I've like heard it somewhere. That's it's, the only it, reason I know. Well, yeah, it became a meme for a while. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably where you heard so, it. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know. How is this going to... Because now we're kind of left with... We have the Asian lady storyline. She knew about Dr. Manhattan being on Earth pretending to be a human. Not a lot of people knew that. Angela Abar was one of the few. The other person was... Adrian, she worships Adrian. I think her, her and Adrian are in cahoots, um, or I don't know something. She's, I don't, you know, she, I don't like her storyline because just because I don't like her, which I don't think you're supposed to. You're not supposed to trust her, and so it works. But I'm just like, I don't know. I'm I'm just too she's not and also like so what do you think about the Osmandius storyline 
at this point? Uh, I think it's so crazy thing. I did. I didn't stick around like through the credits after this last episode. The first time I saw it, so it was only the second time that I I saw saw like the the post credits thing. Yeah. Uh, which was again just incredible. So good. Yeah. (laughs) I I I could see like the so clearly the the Osmandius Adrian V scenes pretty much all of them are are the biggest possible swings you could take oh yeah uh (laughs) it's all insane it's all ludicrous but uh i enjoy it so much (laughs) (laughs) and it could it it was i i think it was getting right up to the point where you're like okay like what's what the fuck is this like is he on the moon is he like yeah uh is he in in vietnam like i kind of thought like maybe he was in saigon for a while like Mm. at some weird like base but it's like no okay i get it like he was you know he wanted this and now yeah it's again it's this thing where it's like ah man you know it's like what what it was a perfect yeah <laughs> where it ends it, it gives you this whole existential thing where it's like here what's all the meaning of all this and we're put on this planet to do this whole thing yeah and then it goes even a layer deep where it's like even if there is a heaven like what if it sucks <laughs> <laughs> like what if yeah. you get sick of heaven and it's like oh my god seriously yeah. like that was like yeah. you know yeah it was like the spongebob episode where squidward moves to that gated village of all other squids and he eats canned bread and he goes to the yoga studio and does the same thing every day and he hates himself after a while where he thinks it's paradise right. and then it's too much of a good thing right and i just like i don't we need know conflict you know yeah you do you need me i do need you this this this, this show, would not be a thing this show would suck it if would be you had terrible. Mr. Phillips and Miss Crookshanks as your podcast. Oh my hosts. god, it would be you awful. Would, the, the, those first ten episodes, though, I bet you would fucking love it. I would love. They would be agreeing with everything I said. Oh. They wouldn't be challenging. They would be on time. They'd be early. You know, they would have done the research. You'd be talking like early forties uh, oh, football. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just you know, just riffing on. Uh, um, I can't even name a football player. Like, we would be talking about, you know, how do you compare Otto Graham to Tom Brady? You know, Otto Graham played in 10 championships. He's got seven championships himself, you know, but that was before there were Super Bowls. And then it's like, well, do you count, you know, the level of competition? He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. And you're like, oh, Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this I. This is what I wanted <laughs> this whole time. This is the only thing. Thank you. Thing I, thank you. Yeah, and it's a crazy thing though, like where we uh, we seek out we seek out conflict. Yeah, we uh, need it. Yeah, pain is good. Yeah, and uh, it's it's about balance, right? Yeah, because there's no you know it's the yin and the yang, but there's no there's no growth without without that growing pain and right. you know i mean just i i really want i don't know if there's a scene in a again this doesn't mean anything because it's me saying it but i don't know if there was a scene in a television show that that made me have a, almost i would say an out-of-body experience where i went out of my body looked around and was like what is anyone else seeing this Am I having a fever dream where Osmanius is being held on trial? He's not speaking. They're all saying what a piece of shit he is. And he hasn't spoken for over a year. And he stands up to speak, farts, and sits back down. <laughs> then they, before the jury is about to say guilty or not, they let in a whole herd of pigs. And he lifts one of them up. And he says, what do you think? And the pig goes, Rah! and he says, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> And they string him up outside and just throw tomatoes in his face. And I was like, what? What is this? Is this real? Did I make this up? Did old legs make this up? Because honestly, that whole scene, 
almost every Osmandius scene feels like something Old Legs would make up as a joke, trying to tell me how good a show was or how weird right. it got. Like that all seems like shit that you would make up that isn't real. Yeah, scene or not a scene. This is a segment we could have played. We could have done, yeah, for sure. Had you not, yeah, had you Spoiled not watched it, it, this would have been incredible. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's like, oh, man. And you honestly, though, it's it's one of those things, though, where you have to really earn it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. none of this works if the rest of it isn't good. And it's this, it's this really fine line that they walk because there aren't, like, a ton of, like, really likable characters yeah so far in the show totally like no one is i no one's just out on like you know oh the team angela like let's go like she's right. fucking prickly you know is, and yeah. and there's a reason why she is but uh it's uh, i think it just makes it that much more interesting right mm-hmm. yeah totally i mean you really want to like the like the Lori blake character but she's like ah like she's like she's also like a fucking, fucking like bitch. She'd be an awful boss. Like, fuck yeah, that. Like, she would be. And she's right? she seems like she almost has her own vendetta. And she isn't. She's just there to just be a pain in everybody's ass. And, like, right. you really want to, like, Looking Glass and hang all your hat on him. But then he betrays Angela. And then he also, like, isn't stable mentally. <laughs> so you can't really, like, put everything yeah. behind him. And- and so they, yeah, and they, they give him this full episode, and then we don't really we don't, see him no. for three weeks. Yeah. Right? We haven't seen him since at the end right. of his, uh, his standalone, right? Yeah, that's it. We so, haven't seen him, and all, all we got was that little brief thing where the dude is like, hey, uh, I'm over at Looking Glass Place, and there's just a bunch of dead dudes here, and he's not here. So it's like, well, something happened. Um, we don't know. Tune in next so. week to find out, right? Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, I I don't really want to like get into like the whole like predictions game. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I, I, I think it's it's stupid because the how unexpected this whole thing has been. It'd be so stupid <laughs> to try and <laughs> anything we thought of, even if we tried to sit here and think of the craziest, most outlandish right. thing we could, they would probably yeah. top it. I could probably scour the internet and and really like dive deep into all the reddit stuff and and maybe come up with something that i thought was interesting yeah. but i really just like i enjoy the show just on a weekly basis i feel like it's appointment television for me which i like having at least like one that you know every week where it's just like oh nice i get to sit down and watch this yeah um and that's that's perfectly fine for me again yeah <laughs> i don't really want it's it's crazy. I don't know how they're really going to wrap much of anything up in one episode. Yeah, feels like there's a lot of strings going on do right we, now. Do we know if uh, there's going to be a season two? Uh, we don't. Okay. Um, I I would assume there would be. It's it's uh, I think as it's done very barring well. Damon Lindelof and HBO have a pretty solid track record. Yeah, uh, they've. Pr- I mean they've. Just to have this show be made, right? Yeah. And and to get past the point of like, here's my elevator pitch for the show. Right. Uh, it's you know, it's not about it's not about Rorsatch. It's not about any of these characters that you know. Uh, and it's a show about race. It's a show about you know all all these all these really difficult subjects that are hard to to have a story about and just to get it to that point and then to like leave it i think would be kind of a mistake and the fact that i think it's been a pretty big success for hbo would Mm -hmm. i would assume that they're coming back but you know who knows i think that this show has has felt like like i want what i want to say is that I want to say that this show feels more like Watchmen than Watchmen does, even the comic. Um, but what I what I really mean by that sentiment is that I feel like this show feels like what what it would have felt like reading Watchmen for the first time in 1985, right? In that culture yeah. and how it, it yeah it, for sure you know and how it tore down and was a real mirror yep. for for the society at the time. You know, and it's, 
it's just like and even and I even think probably for us too. Like I us, think yeah. like when we, I, you and I probably when, when we read Watchmen, like I, I didn't know. I didn't. I had right. no idea that Rorsatch was the guy holding the sign that, that just kind of like hiding in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I thought they might try and do again. Uh, yeah. I still didn't see the Cal A Bar uh, thing mm-hmm. um, at all. Uh, X Calibar X X Caliber. The, yeah. the sword of power. It's a pun. I oh. think it's a pun. Yeah. Definitely you know, a play I, on words. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's I, 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 yeah, you know, like, I, I, had, yeah. I couldn't have guessed in a million years that Adrian V was the one that killed the, the comedian to start the whole thing. Like, right. yeah, I, you know. Yeah. And it is, yeah, it, it is really, it, it's good. <laughs> That's where we end it. It's good. That's, yeah, it's <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> this whole thing is good. All in all, all again, in all. we we don't we don't give out scores. We don't no. review shows. We just yeah talk about them. yeah. It's good. Um, I'm I'm excited to see where it wraps up. I really hope we do get a season two, and and uh, you know I I hope that they can have Damon Lynn. I think this whole this whole thing. It's it's Lindelof or bust, and I think HBO knows that, and I think that HBO really needed this um, with some pretty big letdowns recently um, for their big tentpole um, shows um, over the last right, couple yeah. of years. HBO, uh, Game of Thrones, not very popular. Not very popular, yeah. Really not didn't. a good show. Not a good show. Not a lot not of people watch that. I heard it was pretty expensive, it. and yeah. they are like, eh, yeah. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, HBO, you know, they could be. Could use a whim. They could, you know, now that, you know, Disney Plus is here, you know, the the Mandalorian, stealing stealing views. Can't wait. Can't wait for our fucking Mandalorian episode. (laughs) You know, sometimes you sit around and you're like, man, which one, which one do I watch? Do I watch Watchmen or do I watch the Mandalorian? It's tough, you know? Those are some hard choices that, you know, that we got to look in the mirror we got to make. Um but yeah, but at this point I'm I'm just excited to see the the finale and I think this is a show that you know, believe it or not, I will probably I'm going to go back and rewatch this whole season maybe a couple times. I mean, I've never just to just to try and drink it in more and really try and see all the little subtleties that you know that i think i've uh i thought for a second you were gonna be like you know i think i'm gonna stick with it like you were like you were still on the fence <laughs> like you might drop it yeah like, i don't know yeah i think, a, I'm gonna, I think i'll know? probably watch it still you know Let's i'm gonna see. i'm gonna see this through to the end yeah i'm gonna watch not? the last episode <laughs> <laughs> you know i figured well i wasn't sure you know but well whatever i'm probably not doing anything this weekend, right. so my yeah. man, I'll, I'll probably do it. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm gonna stick with it. I'll probably do it. You know what? You know what? I think it will. That's probably a good idea. But what you guys can stick to is following me on Twitter at Luke Larson eighty nine. This podcast at L Squared Podcast on Instagram on Twitter. We're on Facebook at L Two Podcast. You can find us on SoundCloud on YouTube. Hit us up. Let us know all your crazy Watchmen theories. You know, are you pro pig politics or are you against, you know, anti pig politics? Is the elephant a political commentary on on a certain party? Climate change. Climate change. That's what I saw. It's the elephant in the room. <laughs> Fucking get a grip. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. we'll be back. And if we're not back, it's because uh, everything ends. And if it doesn't end, does it matter? I don't know. Find out next time. (laughs)